Hi everyone, my name is Amania and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I'm basically a 24-year-old Sri Lankan girl currently working as a junior doctor in Sydney, Australia. If you're new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe and if you could give this video a thumbs up if you like it. So let's just get on to the video. So this is my much awaited my medical school journey video. So I finally had some time. I am right out of work, but I thought, you know what? I should definitely do this video today because if I don't, I'm not going to be able to do it. So yeah, so I'm going to basically break this down for you guys to tell you all how I chose IME Malaysia, how it kind of works and how I started my journey in uh, Western Sydney, Australia. So initially, I went to an international school in Sri Lanka. It was the ICM International School in Nugegoda. I did my O-levels and my A-levels there. And during my O-levels was the time where I decided I like science, I like biology, and I like learning about the human body. And I always like to do something that involves helping people. So I wanted to be an oncologist at the time. I was only around 15 years old when I finished my O-levels and I really liked human biology as a subject. So therefore, I chose English, English literature, maths, uh, physics, chemistry, biology, and human biology and singular. So that's what I did and I passed perfectly fine and I decided to do A-levels again in the science stream and I did physics, chemistry, and biology. And this was the time where my mom was kind of looking into universities to see where I should go and study medicine in because we personally didn't have anyone we knew to really ask about these things because I didn't know anyone close to me who had done medicine and therefore we, my mom had to do all the research and she was the one who was looking up all these things about universities and so on. But fortunately, we met this um, agency called Edlocate and they were the ones who actually introduced us to this program, this partner medical school program or pms program is that that's what it's called where i do two and a half years in malaysia at international medical university also known as imu and then i transfer to a university of my option so they were the ones who introduced me to this program so the main reason they actually introduced me was because i was 17 when i finished my a levels and if i was going to go to australia directly i needed a guardian and I didn't have a guardian because I didn't have anyone who was very close to me or my family that lived in Australia with citizenship. So they decided uh, that they would rather send me to Malaysia because as you might, guys might know, medicine is quite expensive. So it will cut down the cost of that and also it's very close to Sri Lanka so I would be able to come back home as soon as, I mean whenever I want to do, which is exactly what I did because if there was a break of more than five days, I'll be like, can I come home? And my parents would be like, yes, you can. And I would fly back home and they would come see me and so on. So it was actually a very good decision that we made because um, it was a bit, it was cost effective and it was close to um, home. And I honestly enjoyed my time in Malaysia a lot because me and my friends, we were all these young kids suddenly free and who had no care in the world. We were going out, staying till late, coming home at like 5 a.m. sometimes and going straight to lectures after. I still don't know how we did that and I'm friends with some of them still and one of my bestest friends is currently in Sydney as well and I met her at IME Malaysia. So because of that, I'm so glad I went there and I really loved my experience in Malaysia and I can't wait to go back and go on holiday there and experience all these things again. Anyways, moving on from that topic, uh, what I was saying was Edlocate introduced me to IMU and they told me about this transfer program and that sounded really good, uh, really suitable for what I was looking into. So because of that, we applied to IMU. I just had to do my eyes. I just had to have the results that they required and also sit an interview and it was all sorted and I got in. I went to IMU um, in 2016, February. So my parents dropped me off there and I was living in an apartment very close to the university. So IMU Malaysia is actually was a pretty good university. 
So the first two and a half years were my theory years. So we mainly had lectures and we learned everything from um, the anatomy of the human body to the pharmacology and how we did this is we learned it system based. So unlike in Sri Lanka where I think you do the anatomy, physiology, all of that separately we had it under each system of the body so we'd learn the cardiovascular system then we'd have the anatomy physiology pathology all of that of that system we'd learn it all together i don't know if that really makes sense to you but it was a very uh, good structure i would say and then at the end of uh, five weeks which is how long we learn a system for we'd um, have an exam and that exam would have a percentage that is weighted onto a final exams. So I did a total of uh, five semesters there because you need to do two and a half years, like I said, at IME before you transfer. So we had two final exams, one at the end of the third year and one at, sorry, one at the end of the third semester and one at the end of the fifth semester. And these were of course quite hard because you had to learn everything from semester one until semester five when you sit here semester five exams. In addition to theory, we had OSCEs, which is structured clinical examinations. And for a lot of people, including me, OSCEs are super overwhelming and makes me really anxious because you need to go in front of an examiner. You're given this little scenario where it would be, it would be like, patient comes in with this, examine them, um, do this, take a history and you do it in front of an examiner and the examiner is like watching you the whole time, marking you, judging you, all of that stuff. So it's quite nerve wracking but they were the one, those were the exams that actually prepared us to what we're doing in hospital right now because as soon as a patient comes in, even though we use the theory we learned, we actually use the clinical skills in the first place because you need those skills to actually assess the patient and then you can use your mind to think of the theory that you learn so um yeah i don't know if that made any sense to you guys but basically what i'm trying to say is oskis are a very important part of your medical school career and anyway we couldn't pass our, our university exams if we didn't know our oskis and we learn clinical skills once a week if i'm not mistaken with simulated patients so that's people pretending to be patients and we examine them so we'd always be broken down into small groups and there'd be a lecturer with us who'll be teaching us what to do additionally we had medical museum sessions which were where we learned anatomy and we had lab sessions and problem-based learning sessions again broken down into small groups trying to solve patient problems so yeah so that's kind of like a summary of how the IMU uh, program worked. In addition to that, um, we kind of, when we transfer, so I'll talk to you guys a bit about that part. So how the transfer program works is you need to make sure that you uh, rank the universities that you want to transfer to uh, from one to 20 at the time, if I was not mistaken. So there's, there's unis in, there were unis in Australia, in UK, in Canada so you kind of label them from 1 to 20 and my first choice was Western Sydney which is what I ended up transferring to it's not a very complicated process but kind it there is a bit of competition if there's 15 students wanting to go to a certain university but there's only 10 spots then obviously the university would want the best 10 out of the 15 so you do have a bit of competition so you need to make sure you pass all your exams your grades are good and you do like extracurricular things for you to stand out because if you don't get that university um, you would get another university but you know it's at the end of the day you do get some university but it might not always be your first choice so it's kind of like you need to make sure you're doing things right and that you um, know what exactly to do for you to make sure you transfer to the university you wanted to and for me like i said it was australia that i wanted to go to so i made sure that i put um, western sydney as my first choice uh, overall the experience at imu was pretty great uh, it was 
it was very like structured like i said before but again when you're in university you're not spoon fed anything you kind of had to learn on your own you had to study on your own there's lectures that you can refer to but if you have questions you need to talk to the lecturer other than that you can have study groups with your friends so it it, it can be quite a difficult when you initially begin because i remember when i started i was like Oh my god what is this this is nothing like school but i did get used to it and i did figure out what i wanted um, what how i wanted to study and how what worked for me and you know i eventually got the hang of it so it was fine overall and i would say i am actually a pretty great place to go study in especially if transferring is something that you're keen on at the end of the day you get your degree from the university you graduate from So for me I got my degree from Western Sydney University that's what it says on my um qualification that I got my MBBS from Western Sydney it doesn't mention IMU because that's how it works so it's in a way it's like it's a pretty good pretty good opportunity because you get to spend two and a half years in Malaysia you get to experience all of that then you get to come to Australia and the format of the education is also not different the curriculum is set in a way where you can transition smoothly from Malaysia to Australia and i think as a student it's a great country to go to you get to have lots of fun you get to experience so many things it's a pretty reasonable country to live in as well the expenses are not too much So I really enjoy my time in Malaysia and I'm not saying that 100% you should go there if you're considering medicine but it is something to open your mind to because it's a pretty good program that they have and I would recommend it to anyone but then again it is your personal choice but I'm just giving you some advice from my point of view and I think it's a pretty good program that you should um try out if you want to so I think that's about it for my uh first part of this um this video because it will be very long if I talk about my time in West Hills, Sydney Australia so I would wrap this up as my first part in um my medical school journey This is how I got into medical school and how I completed my international medical university um the first two and a half years of my degree there and I always know that you guys have so many questions I'm always happy to help uh and I try to give advice to my best uh, capability but of course there are some things I can't really answer because I can't tell you what's best for you all the time so i do recommend your research on university options or unis that you want to go to because initially i did want to go and study in sri lanka and then move to australia but i did not have that option because my parents were thinking of saitam or kdu but it was really not an option for me because they didn't have a transfer program option and they really wanted me to get some experience in a foreign country which is why this pathway was the most suitable one for me i know i say so yeah a lot but on that note i am going to end this video and i just wanted to tell you guys that i'll be making more videos especially a part 2 for this and if you guys have any other suggestions or anything you'd like to see just drop a comment down below and other than that if you like this video please give it a thumbs up i really appreciate it and i love you guys for all the really cute kind sweet comments that you leave or the messages that you send me please follow me on my social media and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i hope you enjoyed this video and i can't wait to bring you guys more videos especially vlogs because you all seem to really like that So I'll keep that in mind and I'll make sure I do that in future as well. So thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.